Now there is a lot of different considerations to take into account when choosing your antenna mount and location. One thing to remember is that uh, every single antenna setup is going to be a compromise and you have to figure out what compromises you're willing to live with. In an off-road situation, you have to have durability and flexibility. And so this is why I have it on a spring. So if it hits a low hanging branch, it's also why I have it on the front bumper and not say in the middle of the roof. Uh, it's helpful because with a shorter antenna, you can get into a garage and it's gonna get hit on less sticks and tree branches. Uh, that being said, it's going to have a trade-off in the terms of overall radio performance. And in this case, right, it's grounded and it has a solid counterpoise ground in the steel bumper that goes into the chassis ground. But there is not a ground plane on the mount. There is obviously the sheet metal hood, but it's not uh, directly connected. It's indirectly connected through the tube bumper into the frame, into the body, and then into the hood. And so, you know, you're giving up some level of performance because normally the radio signals would reflect off of the conductive ground plane. So for an off-road mount, this is what I came up with. I liked it here as opposed to like above the tail light on the rear hatch because it's out in the open. So that way you have free space. It's less likely to have interference and blocking of signals due to the rear hatch. And so this is where I came up with it, but this is obviously because I have a special bumper that allows me to fabricate mounts on it. Let me show you a couple other options that other people have done before. So in general, for best radio performance, you want it as high as possible. You want it out in the open with no restrictions and you want it on a good ground plane. So one option is you can get mounts that are designed to screw into this hood channel. So it's just a steel mount that goes in. You can put screws on the inside of the fender and it has the antenna uh, off to the side of your hood. You can put it on the driver's side so it looks kind of symmetric with your AM FM antenna. So that's not going to be as tall, uh, but it is going to be, you know, more on top of an actual reflective ground plane, which can help with your signal. The best option for actual radio performance is going to be drilling a hole in your roof somewhere. And there's something called an NMO mount for a new Motorola mount, but it basically is a weatherproof seal. You drill like a half inch hole through your roof. It's a weatherproof seal. The mount itself grounds to the sheet metal of the vehicle so that way this entire rooftop becomes the ground and it becomes part of the ground plane so you will get a lot of good reflection of your radio signal it'll be a solid ground plane but that also makes it a lot taller clearly i would not be able to get into my garage if i did that and it's also going to make it more susceptible to off-road damage so this is one of those things where if you're just a ham radio enthusiast you may want to do that, but if you're looking at an off-road application, that may not be the best. Now, if you have a steel roof rack or a roof cage, or in my case, I've got a steel light bar, so I could weld a tab and mount an antenna up here, but then you still have to figure out how to get a good ground because you don't have the mount directly cut through the sheet metal. So you'll have to route your coax up here. It'll ground through the light bar, but rails are mounted with rubber gaskets to weatherproof things, and that's not gonna have a good uh, electrical connection to the roof so you might have to run a ground strap and either like solder it or bolt it to the actual roof bar spare tire carriers are always an option um, you know depending on what kind you have I have one that I made myself but like I could have welded a tab off here and mounted a tall antenna on the back obviously mine folds down as opposed to swings out that would make it more difficult to fold it down um, it would also be sandwiched between, you know, a tire and the back glass and the hatch. So I would have to run probably like a four foot antenna just to clear the roof line. Cause if it's not any taller than the roof line, then that's going to make it difficult for radio signals. But that's something that people like to do. Another option is a tail light mount, similar to the hood channel on the front fender area. Uh, you can get mounts that are designed to go into the seam and the higher up that you mount them, you know, the more clearance you'll get with the tip of the antenna over the roof line and the better signal you'll get. But it's always a trade-off, right? The taller your antenna is, the better reception and transmission you'll have. But it will be more susceptible to trail damage. Another thing that I'll say is mag mount antennas. So these are antennas that have a magnet base that you can just snap on top of your hood. I don't recommend these for an off-road situation. That was actually my first CB antenna that I had. And within the first few minutes, uh, tree branches knocked it off and then you get the coax swinging on the side of your vehicle. You get the heavy magnet base knocking into your windows and denting up sheet metal on the side of your vehicle. So I don't recommend mag mount antennas. But the important thing to remember, again, is that everything is a trade-off and you gotta decide what 
is it that you're trying to get out of your radio if you're trying to get maximum performance then go for you know a giant antenna on your roof if you're just trying to have good enough trail communication so that you can talk to the people that are kind of within eyesight just like you know in a line of uh, vehicles on a trail most any of these type of antenna mounts will do the trick so it's just important to decide what it is that you're trying to accomplish and what it is that you want you know you don't need to overthink it and you can always change things up later so for my antenna mount i've got some flat bar stock eight inch thick and i'm just going to cut it to length and i'm going to mirror image that weld it over here i have to get my grinder and drill press out drill a, a good uh clean hole and i'll do a nice uh little gusset type uh mounting brace to make sure that that stays um nice and strong because when this gets whipping you know you want to have extra support so that way it doesn't uh, put all of the stress on the weld over here got a nice hole drilled i'll have to hit it with the grinder to knock off the burrs on the back side and then i'll just uh, trim off the edges with the cutting wheel on a grinder should be good to go to smooth it out cut it to length and weld it up Always wear your PPE, gloves, glasses, fire resistant jacket. No one likes to feel sparks flying all over themselves. Now in a pure world I would go ahead and get like a Dremel and grind off paint, but I'm going to assume since I've got the tab that's bare metal, I can get enough weld in that crevice it'll just burn through the paint is what I'm anticipating. I'm not going to go into whole detail on welding, but this is all shiny metal, so I got the ground clamp here. Got my Harbor Freight welder plugged in. It's a flux core welder. It's an eighth inch material, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. Check out flux core arc welding, eighth inch material. It says max one and six. So I'm gonna go over here, max one and six. Huh, that's, I weld a lot of eighth inch material apparently. So I'm gonna go ahead and just try and uh, so I'm going to go ahead and try and just uh, get a couple tacks in here so I can at least take the clamp off and then do a larger bead here and see if I can get any in the crease over there. Lots of spatter because I don't have clean material on the tube, but hopefully that'll at least uh, hold it good enough to take the clamp off. I got an extra little tab just cut to length. I'm going to go ahead and weld that to the top of the tab and then I'll just take a sledgehammer, pound that down to the curvature of the actual tube and that should allow it to have some extra gusseting and strength. Three pound sledgehammer. And I'll just do a bead on the top now.
And now I have a strong antenna mount, not gonna flex, not gonna break off, no matter if it gets hit by trees or vibration or whatever, driving down the highway. I'll take this mount apart, I'll bolt it into this tab and connect my coax and then I'll have to tune it and that'll be good. So I'll go ahead and drop this antenna mount in. So try and do this delicately. This is the base, this goes in from the bottom up. Then you have the plastic washer, then the flat washer, then the split ring nylon washer. And you can get some uh, adjustable wrenches and tighten everything up. The spring just screws into the mount, so here's the actual mount. Here's the spring, the antenna itself screws into the spring, so everything just gets tightened and snugged up. But now it's basically just ready to tune the antenna. You can just hand tighten it for the time being, but there you go.